Hi, and welcome back to the Java Web App Tutorial. In the previous video, we built this reusable form component that we want to use for editing our contacts here. In this video, we're going to take a look at how Bodin deals with data binding so that we can actually bind uh, these contact objects to the form fields that we have, and how we want to build the API for our component for maximum reusability. So let's get started. And again, I want to remind you that there is a text version of this tutorial up on Vaughn.com, and there's a link to that in the show notes. So whenever I type in a lot of code or something and you don't feel like typing, you can find it all there in a copy-pastable format. Okay, with that said, let's get started. So the first thing that I want to do or introduce you to is the concept of a binder in Vaughn. So when we work with data binding in Vaughn, it always involves a binder. A binder is something that takes input fields and binds them to properties in a Java object. In this case, we have a Java object, which is the contact, and we have these text fields and email fields and combo boxes that we want to bind to fields on that object. So let's start by creating a new binder. And this will be typed with the type of object that we're going to bind to. We're going to give it a name, binder. And then we're going to instantiate this with a new bean validation binder, and we're going to pass in contact.class here, like this. Okay, so bean validation binder is a specific flavor of binder that helps us take advantage of the fact that we have these bean validation annotations on our data object. And that way we can reuse those in our in our UI code as they are. So we'll get the same not empty validations, and, and so on. Binder works in a way that it binds these fields that we have on our form to fields on the contact here by their names. So you can see that our text field names here are first name and last name. And the same if we go into contact, we have first name and last name. So that's a really handy kind of convenience built into the binder. There are more advanced APIs that you can use for binding to specific properties or using getters and setters and things like that. But in this case, we can use the simple binder dot bind instance fields and pass in this meaning this form layout that we're in. And whenever we pass now a uh, contact object to the binder, it will bind these fields to fields on that contact object based on their names. Now, we want to make our contact form as reusable as possible. So when we're editing a contact and pressing save button or something, what we really want to happen is that we want to save the changes and somehow we want those changes to obviously show up in somewhere else in the application, in this case, the, the grid here. So the kind of straightforward, trivial solution would be that we would pass in our main view here to constructor and then Whenever we save, we could call main view and uh, kind of pass in the contact there. The, the problem with this approach is that that would kind of make a permanent link between those two components. So we couldn't use this contact form anywhere outside of main view if we wanted to. And that includes building tests for this. So it would be very hard for us to test this in isolation without having to provide a main view. Instead, when you're building your custom components, typically you want them to work the same way as any component in Vaadin does, meaning that it should be usable wherever you want it, want to use it. The same way as you can put a Vaadin button in any layout, any class, you'd ideally want to be able to use the contact form anywhere. So to do that, we want to have the component configurable by passing in properties. So setting properties on the contact form to configure its state. And then we want the contact form to trigger events whenever something interesting happens. In our case, there are essentially three properties that we want to set on the form for the API. We want to set the dropdown values for the statuses and the companies. And then we, of course, want to set the contact that we're editing. There are also three events that we're gonna uh, fire from this component. So the save, delete, and then a cancel event that we can then uh, notify the user of this component of what's happening inside and they can then take the appropriate actions depending on what they want to do with the information, for instance, that a contact got saved. Okay, so that's the theory 
of what we're doing. So let's start with the practice of it. So the first thing I wanted to set is the statuses. That's that's pretty simple because that's a enumeration. So that's not something that we necessarily even need to get passed in. Instead, what we can do is we can call status and we can set the items and we can get the contact the status enumeration like this and then get the values from it like so. For companies, it's a little bit different uh, because we would need to fetch those from the database. Now, for this to be maximally reusable, I don't want this co uh, component itself to do any kind of database queries. Instead, I just want those companies to be passed in. We'll need them before we can really do anything else here, before we can edit any component, uh, any, any contact. So I'm going to take them in as a parameter here in the constructor. So let's define that anyone who uses this component will need to pro provide us with a list of companies before they can uh, start using this component. So we'll call this companies. And then we'll take company drop down, set items on it, and pass in the companies list. Then, uh, again, the same as we had with the data grid here, we need to define which, uh, which property of the company should actually be shown. Otherwise, it's just going to show the objects uh, to string representation, which is not what we're looking for here. So we're going to call company. And we're going to set the item label generator. And here we can define what method should get run to generate the label. So in this case, we're going to do company dot get name. So we got want the name of the company here. Now, if you try to build the project right now, you'll notice that it fails. And that is because we're not passing in a list of companies when we're initializing this form. So let's fix that just to keep our project in a in a uh, compiling state. So we'll do the same as we did for contact service, we'll pass in the company service here. And then we can use the company service to find all the companies in our database. Let's verify that everything works. So in my case, I'm already running the server, I'm just going to do a build. If you're not running the server yet, go ahead and start the server. So you can see if it works. Okay, so the server restarted. And I'm now able to see the different statuses that I have. And hopefully I can also see the companies. So now we have two of the three things that we want to configure on this. The third thing that I want to configure is setting the contact. The contact is something that we want to be able, able to update several times. So whenever we select a new contact in the grid, we want to be able to update that. So it doesn't make a lot of sense for us to pass that in to the constructor. Instead, we're going to create a separate method for that. So we'll create a public method. It'll be void. And we'll call set contact. And this will take in a contact and pass this right to the binder. So binder dot set bean and pass in the contact. So what happens here is that when we call set bean on the binder, since we've called binder dot bind instance fields, whatever contact we pass in here, will automatically get bound to these fields based on their names. Okay, so now we've covered the first part of our API. So how the user can configure this form. So that gets us to the next part of our API. How do we notify the user of this form component that's a save action or a delete action or, or something has happened? Botting comes with a built in event bus system that we can piggyback on. Uh, what we need to define are the types of events that we want to fire. And by defining the event types, we'll have a type safe system of firing those events and using them from from the main view, knowing exactly what's happening inside the form. So now I'm going to uh, use a little bit of pre baked code again, and define and define the event types. And again, reminding you that there is a text version of this tutorial where you can find all of this code. So you can go ahead and copy paste it from there. Or you can go to the GitHub repo 
that's also linked from the text version if you want to uh, copy it from there. But let's take a look at how we define these events. So we have a static, uh, just generic event uh, for this form. And the reason we have that is because every single event that we have, we want to pass in a contact. So that way we have a way of sending the contact that we're currently saving or deleting uh, to the user of this uh, form. We then define the specific event types, save event, delete event, and close event, which will correspond to the different buttons that we have here, the different things that may uh, happen inside of our form. All right, so now that we have the events defined, let's go ahead and hook them up to the button so that they get triggered. So we'll start with the save button and add a click listener to it. And what we want to happen when somebody clicks on the save button is that we want to check if the binder is in a valid state. So if we have everything we need, we'll trigger a save event. So let's split that out into a uh, method of its own. We'll call that validate and save. And then we can use the ID to generate the method. And here, if the binder is valid, then we'll fire an event and we'll create a new event. So a new save event, pass in this. So that's the source of our event. And then we'll pass in the bean that's in binder. All right, so that takes care of save. The next one we want to handle is delete. Again, adding a click listener. Here, what we want to do is just fire an event, pass in the event type, which is a delete event, this, which is the source, and then binder.getBean, which is the uh, contact that we wanted to delete. Then for the close event, we're going to add a click listener, and we're going to fire an event, and the event type is a close event, and the source of the event is this form. Okay. Finally, we're going to make the form a little bit more user friendly by disabling the save button whenever the form is not in a valid state. We can do that by using the binder and adding a status change listener. So whenever the status change, uh, the status changes, we'll call the save buttons set enabled and the enabled value will come from the binder. So depending on if it's valid or not, we can toggle the button. Okay, so that was a lot of typing. Let's build this, just make sure everything uh, builds correctly, no issues. Uh, you should still be able to see all the statuses in the companies. In the next video, we're gonna finish the component here by hooking it up to the main view so that whenever we select a contact here, it'll get populated into our form. And whenever we update it here, or save or delete, it will reflect in the data grid that we have here. So be sure to subscribe to the channel, enable those notifications, and I hope to see you in the next video to finish off this form component. Thanks for watching.